All right, it's time for lesson 7-14. We're going to be changing fractions into, into decimals. And remember, a fraction is a division sign with numbers. So <clears throat> easy transition. Here we go. Remember, n is the numerator. Top number is the numerator. d is the denominator. So we're going to use n over d here. To change a fraction into a, into a decimal, we're going to divide. Okay, We're going to... Make a long division problem. But we're going to put the numerator inside the house where the dividend goes. Put the de denominator same place as the divisor. When you're not sure, remember the D. Denominator goes where the divisor goes. Okay, And we're simply going to divide out the problem. We have to do this with decimals, though. So how is that going to look? I have one-fourth here. Okay, I'm going to, again, write the 1 the numerator inside, and then put the denominator outside. But I'm also going to add a decimal and a couple zeros right away to start. Okay? 4 doesn't go into 1. Oops, don't forget to put your decimal in your answer right away. 4 doesn't go into 1, but it does go into 10 two times. 2 times 4 is 8. Subtract, I get 2. 2 is less than 4. Bring down a 0. Now 4 goes into 20. 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. Subtract to get 0. Once I get 0, I'm done. And I can say now that 1 fourth, fourth is equal to 25 hundredths. We know this is true because 1 fourth of a dollar is a quarter. And that is how you write 25 cents or a quarter. Okay, so I simply write the numerator inside the house, the denominator on the outside where the divisor goes, and divide with decimals. Let's try another one. Two-fifths. Okay. Pause your video. I want you to write out the division problem. Solve it if you want, but you don't have to. Um, so you can start the video and watch me solve it, or you can try to solve it first and then watch me show you the answer. Okay. Pause your video and at least copy down the problem. All right, again, two divided by 5 decimal couple zeros decimal okay 5 does not go into 2 but 5 goes into 20 4 times 4 times 5 is 20 subtract look at there I'm done already 2 fifths is equal to 4 tenths not too difficult just have to remember Numerator divided by the denominator. And write it in long division form the right way. Okay, if I were to write this out left to right, it would be 2 divided by 5. All right, let's try another one. All right, here we have 3 eighths. Again, pause your video. Um, copy down the problem the right way. If you want to try to solve it first, go for it. If not, um, just watch me solve the problem. All right, you should have at least copied down the problem. If not, you've solved it and wait to see if you're right. Here we go. 3 divided by 8, my decimal, couple zeros. 8 doesn't go into 3, put my decimal up there, but 8 will go into 30. Uh, let's see, 3 times, 3 times 8 is 24. Subtract and get 6. That'd be, you know, 10 borrow from there. And then bring down the 0. 8 goes into 60. How many times? Well, 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 7 is 56. 8 times 7 is 56. Subtract, borrow here. 10 minus 6 is 4. Add a 0. Bring it down because I haven't gotten 0 down at the bottom yet. Now 8 goes into 40. 5 times, 5 times 8 is 40. Subtract, get 0. My answer is 375 thousandths. 3 eighths is equal to 375 thousandths. It's that simple. You just have to do a di um, division problem with decimals, but you're going to put zeros in until you get to an exact answer. All right. There are times, though, 
when you're not going to get to an exact answer because you're going to get what's called a repeating pattern. Okay? Let's do this problem one-third, just like we did before. One divided by three decimal couple zeros. Okay? Go through the division. You don't know it's repeating necessarily yet. I do, but you don't. Three goes into ten three times. Three times three is nine. Subtract. Ten minus nine is one. Bring down a zero. Okay? Three goes into ten. How many times? Three times. Three times three is nine. Now I can see where the pattern keeps repeating. If I add a zero, bring it down, I'm going to be dividing three into ten again. That's not going to change. Okay? So what do I do? I stop. I'm done. I know it's going to keep being 0.33333. Well, whatever the first number that repeats, the first part of the pattern, I'm going to write one-third is equal to decimal three with a line over it. That line means three repeating. So your answer would be one-third is equal to three-tenths repeating, which means the three would continue going infinitely. It would never change. All right, so once in a while, some fractions are like this. One-third, two-thirds are like this. Um, a number of fractions when you divide by nine, nine is the denominator, you'll have repeating numbers. So you got to watch for that. If you see that pattern continue and you can't get to zero, stop, put the line over the part that's the pattern. All right. Go ahead and turn your books to page 305. Page 305. <clears throat> Let's look at how we can use um, putting numbers into fractions by either their ratio or number and then find what the decimal value is. Okay. In baseball and softball, this also happens for other sports. Um, golf, greens hit in regulation, fairways hit in, um, in a round. They'll give an average... Uh, basketball, free throws, there's a number of them, but batting average is a very popular one to use. Batting average describes how well a player hits. It's not a mean, even though it's called an average. Um, uh, it's not adding all the numbers together and divide by how many there are. It's a percentage, okay, which we can show in, in decimal form. A player's batting average is a fraction with the number of hits as the numerator over the top of number of batting number of at-bats is the denominator. These fractions are usually written as decimals, and they go out three places. And that way they give a nice that, um, comparison number. Okay? In the f um, and you can see on display here, it shows, change the color, you can see it here, three hits and nine at-bats. This is going to be the first problem we do. Number 24. In the first four games of the season, Lauren got three hits in nine at-bats. What is her batting average? Well, again, the fraction is three hits out of nine at bats. How do I write that as a division problem? Three inside the house divided by nine. Decimal in the answer. Nine doesn't go into three. Nine goes into 30 how many times? Uh, nine times three is 27. Of course, I didn't leave myself enough room to solve the problem over here. So we're going to move it over a little bit so I have room to solve it. Nine times three is twenty-seven. Subtract and get three. Bring down to zero. Okay. Nine goes into thirty three times. Now we see a repeating pattern with the ninths, right? But we can continue this out to batting average and go out. Three is twenty-seven. Three bring down to zero to the three numbers, and then that would be our batting average. Batting average was, whoopsie, erase that line. Three hundred thirty-three. Okay, batting average is written as a number of decimals. Okay, Felicia has got five out of eight at bats. <clears throat> We're gonna shrink this up here, so we have room to work. Put this up in the corner. You can read your books. I can read it small. Felicia's on a softball team. In her first eight at bats, she got five hits. So that would be five. Five out of eight, which is equal to five divided by eight. And we know we're going to go out three numbers for batting average. I'm going to put all three zeros out there right away, just because I can. Okay, eight does go into five, goes into 50 how many times? Uh, 
4 times would be 32, 5, 6, 6 times. 6 times 8 is 48. Subtract and get 2, bring down a 0. 8 goes into 20, uh, 2 times. 2 times 8 is 16. Subtract and get 4. Bring down a 0. 8 goes into 40, 5 times. So we have an exact average of 600. 25 thousandths. Batting average is 625. Okay, go ahead and solve number 26 on your paper and pause your video, and then I will show you the answer in a moment. All right, two ways we can show our answer on this one. Um, <clears throat> when we do 2 divided by 3, we get an answer, a raw answer of 0.666 repeating. Okay, that can be your average, or we can round because batting average is that nearest thousands place, which then the six would tell us to go up, so we would have it rounded to 667. Either answer would be correct. All right, let's look at one more problem. Go down to problem number 28. <clears throat> at the team picnic, the players raced on an obstacle course that the coach planned. The first part of the race was on a trail three-eighths of a mile long. The second part was on a park road four-tenths of a mile long. What was the total length of the race? Okay, we need to add these together. Well, how are we going to do that? We need to change the 3 eighths, the 3 eighths, into a decimal number so we can add them. All right, so how are we going to do that? We're going to take 3 eighths is equal to 3 divided by 8. A couple zeros. Decimal my answer. 8 does not go into 3. 8 goes into 30. 2 times, 2 times 8, no, wrong, 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 thinking of a wrong problem. All right, caught my mistake this time. 8 times 3 is 24. There we go. Subtract, I get 6, bring down a 0. <clears throat> 8 goes into 60, 7 times, 7 times 8 is 56. Subtract and get 4, add a 0, bring it down. 8 goes into 40, 5 times 40, subtract and get 0. All right, so now <clears throat> I've got a problem here. I'll slide this over and make it a little smaller. Now I've got the second half of my problem. I've got 4 tenths of a mile that I need to add to decimal lined up for adding 375 thousandths of a mile. And I add them together. Make sure my decimal is lined up in all my numbers. 5. Seven, seven. 775 thousandths of a mile. All right, this is the kind of problems that you're going to see in your homework. Speaking of your homework, it's time. Homework and remembering, 7-14. Uh, this is the last of this section, so we'll review this and uh, be taking a quick quiz on Friday. Good luck.